generic repository pattern. It's one of the most infamous design patterns out there. In this video, we're going to implement it and then I'm going to explain why I think this is actually an anti-pattern. Let's start off by defining the contract for the interface of our generic repository. I'm going to add the interface in our application layer and I'm just going to call it iRepository. Of course, we're going to make it a generic interface. So let's give it a generic argument of T entity, which is going to represent our entity type. This interface should have all of the methods that you could possibly want inside of a generic repository. So let's add a few methods and then see how we can implement this. So I want to add a method which is going to return a task and a list of T entities and we're going to call it get all async. So this one is going to just return all of the entities for this repository. Then we want to have another method which is going to return a nullable T entity and we're going to call it get by ID. Now the tricky part here is which type is the ID. You can also add a generic argument here for the T entity ID, but let's just assume for simplicity's sake that this is actually going to be a GUID. So I'm just going to add one argument and I'm going to add the async suffix. So we have our get all and get by ID methods. Let's also add methods for inserting, updating and deleting entities. So we're going to say void insert and we're going to pass it a T entity argument and then the same for the update and for the delete. So for delete, you need to specify a T entity and you're done. So these are the generic repository methods. And we're also going to add one more method for saving the changes in the database. So let's call it save changes async and let's not give it any arguments just to make it simple. So these methods will cover most of the use cases that you have, but what happens when you need to write a very custom query and you don't have a method satisfying that query? What you typically do in that case is have a method in the generic repository returning an iQueryable and you call it getQueryable and then you use this method to get back a queryable instance and just implement whatever query you need. Let's see how we're going to implement the generic repository. Let's say in the persistence project, I'm going to add a repository class and we're going to use it to implement our generic repository. So let's make this class public. We're going to make it generic of the entity and it's going to implement the iRepository interface of the entity. Let's add the missing members. How are we going to implement this? So we're going to use EF core and let's inject our application DB context. So we're going to call it context and inject it from the constructor. And now we're going to use our EF core DB context to implement the generic repository methods. So for the get all async, let's make it asynchronous. And what you do is you say context and then you grab the DB set of your T entity. And you can see that there's a constraint here that it has to be a reference type. So what we have to do is we have to say that the entity is a class and now you won't be getting a compile error. So now you just need to add to list async and you need to of course await this call because this is asynchronous and this is the implementation of the get all async method. For the get by ID async method, we're going to start by making it asynchronous and we're going to say return await context. We're going to grab the set of the entity and we can call the find async method and pass in our primary key. For the get queryable, this is super simple. You just return the actual DB set and that is actually the queryable. So you're just going to say return the actual set. For the insert, update and delete methods, we would have context set and grab the T entity and we just call the respective add, update or remove methods. So here we would have update, here we would have remove, and then in the end, we just call the context save changes method. So save changes async. We can, for example, return the task returned by the save changes method, or we could even await it if we want to. It doesn't matter because in the end, the one calling this repository will have to await 
the save changes method to persist the changes in the database. You can see this is relatively straightforward because it's just a wrapper around the F core. So how do we actually configure this with dependency injection and how do we use it? In our dependency injection class in the persistence project, we're going to add a scoped service for our repositories by calling add scoped and we need to specify our generic repository type. So this is going to be the I repository interface. And we're going to specify the repository implementation as the service that is provided when the interface is requested. So we're going to say type of repository, and this will take care of configuring our generic repository with dependency injection. So let's finally see how we can use the generic repository in our application. So here, I'm going to replace the use of our application DB context with the generic repository. So I'm just going to inject the repository at the bottom. So here we need the customers repository and we also need the orders repository. So how you do that is you inject an I repository of customer and you call it customers repository. And you're also going to need an I repository of order and you can call it orders repository. And now let's inject these from our constructor. So let me just align this vertically so you can see what's going on. So we're injecting our repositories from the constructor and let's see how we're going to use them. So we need to replace the usage of our DB context. So this is going to be customers repository get by ID async. So we're going to just pass in the request customer ID assuming that the GUID is the primary key, which it is in the database level, the next step would be replacing this call here for inserting the order. So this is going to be order repository, insert, and we're going to pass it to the order entity. The last part here was just saving the changes in the database. And we were previously using the DB context, but now we need to use one of the repositories. Now, it really is strange that you can either call customers or orders repository. Let's say we call the orders repository and they're both going to work just fine since they are wrapping the same DB context. So instead of working with the DB context, we are now working with two repository interfaces, the customers and the orders repository. It's a little confusing which repository should call the save changes method and let's not even begin with actually fetching some random query. For example, let's go to the get order query handler and let's say you have to implement this here. So we don't have a method in our repository to implement a query like this. So this would turn into let me inject the orders repository to show you. So let's say I repository of order. This is going to be called the orders repository and let's inject it from the constructor. So now instead of context here, we're going to say orders repository and get queryable. So we replaced the nice usage of the DB context with exposing the queryable to be able to query the orders entity. In my opinion, the generic repository pattern is just a useless wrapper around EF cores DB context you'll have to expose the iQueryable instance to be able to write custom queries. And at that point, why not just use EF core directly? Although I think the generic repository pattern is pointless, I think there's value in the specific repository pattern, which is common in domain driven design, where your repositories only return your aggregates or entities and you have very specific methods on your interface returning only what you need in your domain. But you wouldn't have the save changes method exposed. You would rather create an I unit of work abstraction and expose the save changes method on that. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel and take a look at the video that you can see right now. Stay awesome.